Hey everybody, welcome back to the Monkey Shine Lab. And uh, today we've got another one of those What is Wrong With You reviews. Uh, if you don't know what one of these is, I take a film that you would not generally think to sit through and I sit through it for you. In fact, I do it once, I do it twice, I do it three times at least. More often, four to a half a dozen. I take a film that you would not maybe necessarily consider, and I try to make it a film that is available to the wider audience. But I always advocate buying a DVD copy directly from the artist. Was it great? No, it wasn't. But it has a lot going for it, and I'm going to get into that. We're going to get into the positives as well as the negatives of this film. So stick around, kids. But first, as always, a little disclaimer. So, uh, all the kids must now leave the room for imagination time. A film called... The Call Girl of Cthulhu. As some of you may or may not know, I've been reading H.P. Lovecraft since I was probably in about the fourth grade. I stumbled onto a book uh, at a store and I, I brought it home and I didn't understand it. And, um, you know, I waited until I was a little older and I tried reading it again and I didn't understand it. Um, I read it now as a 50-some-year-old man and still don't understand it. It's a sort of a style that gets into, um, it's a, it's, it's a, it's, it's, it's the first writer that ever asks, that I ever encountered that would, like, not go into graphic detail about what a monster looked like, um, Lovecraft didn't often describe things. Um, and so his writing was never very much of a sexual nature either. Although this is something that you find continuously woven into the cinematic attempts to bring anything sort of Lovecraft or Lovecraft inspired to the screen. And so when I first saw this film, um, I was extremely critical, but this is, here's why I sit through a film multiple times. You can sit through a movie at one point and I mean, yes, you, yes and no, you know whether you like a film or not, but I, I get to the point of whether I find something to be appreciable or not. Uh, and then also if it can swing up the scale, which is what this movie did. No kidding. It kind of went all over the map for me and it still does. I just sat through a, this is probably my fourth or fifth time. <laughs> that is just never going to sound right, but it's probably my fourth or fifth time in less than a week and a half. But again, I, I find that you really, you need to, um, sit through something uh, a couple of different times if you deem it worthy of your attention you need to give it another couple of passes a little little like a wine expert a little less pretentious maybe no a lot more pretentious does this film do a a good job with the lovecraft is probably what like the three or four friends of mine who watch this video are sitting there wanting me to get to. Yeah, it is a parody. It's a, it's a parody. It is a horror movie. It is a, uh, it is something inspired by 
and sort of a an homage to Lovecraft, the use of films, um, the reanimator and uh, from beyond sort of set the standard of how cosmic horror is going to be approached in cinema. And um, I think that's kind of unfortunate because um, it, it limits the audience. Uh, I, I know a lot of people that have very open minds that would not sit through this film once, let alone multiple times. Because, and I'll tell you, you know, here's for those of you who are looking for this, there's plenty of sex, there's plenty of gore, and, you know, in in between a lot of that, there's some some decent writing, some decent plays on Lovecraft stuff or inclusion of Lovecraft characters, uh, re reusing their names at least to putting them in a different time period, of course. Um, but the film is at its heart, it is a send up. It's not meant to be taken super seriously. And that was my mistake as, as, a, as a Lovecraft fan, instead of watching it as a horror movie fan, which is what I should have done. Before you get into this, go into it, thinking I'm going to watch a punk-inspired sort of Lovecraftian send-up. I'm going to look to giggle and laugh at a few different things. Um, I'm going to look for adequate, uh, adequate to actually pretty, pretty commendable um, practical effects. There's, there's no real computer. I'm proud to report that this movie doesn't have one set of fake boobs in it. There, there are, there are several topless and nude scenes in this and, and you won't be disappointed. There is, there is one set of fake boobs in here. I guess. <laughs> it's funny. I see it five times, but I don't remember. There is one, there is one girl for like three seconds. I don't even think she gets topless. I I have to go back and watch it a sixth time. That's all I do. Um, I would say that this movie, um, maybe a, it's a it's a three, it's a three out of five. It's it's got lots of boobs. It's got lots of blood, and it's got decent characters. Um, I I like the actors. They they play off the stiffness very well. Um, and at home. I don't mean that as a euphemism. All the fun and games you would generally like to see with a really good um, punk music soundtrack. Uh, I, I like that, I appreciate that. I, I think that B movies and uh, films that sort of, you know, it's kind of like going to a Guar concert. It's like a Guar concert film. That's what this would be. It's kind of a Guar concert film at times. Um, but the music is really good. It's uh, varied, um, I, you know, and I watch through the credits. Um, I do rate this a good three out of five with, um, it's solid enough to sit through. Here's what I would have changed if I could have probably changed anything. I'm gonna erase all that. I'm not gonna talk about that guy looking like Brent Spiner. Oops. No, it, it, I would have, as you see with, with my, videos uh i do not let myself ramble straight through it would be absolutely fucking patently unwatchable instead what i do is i edit everything that's why you see strange cuts and i jump you know different positions and, and this and that you know this film could have dealt with some tightening up and here's the here's the caveat that i'd like to throw in there here's the caveat man making a film is very very difficult to do what these people did takes a lot of temerity um and more than a little belief in unicorns and other shit that just doesn't exist for a film to get made at all 
with Hollywood money and backing and things like that is difficult. Um, to get a film made off of that grid and to do kind of what you want and make as gory a film as you want and include nudity the way you want and whatever else, to, to do an independent film as I kind of see this being for all intents and purposes um, is a near impossibility. So this crew, these writers, uh, the, this director and all of the people that are listed in the special thanks at the end of the movie. If you sit through a Marvel movie, you know those things where they show you how many people worked from one effect company and it's like a phone book? A thousand different people in a, in a company animating just part of a film. Um, there is a miniature army of thanks, and I'm sure it was all due to get this movie in the in the can. And by the way, this film was done in 2016. I'm coming to it very late, but that's prime video for you and looking for something disagreeable to make me sit through on the part of my wife, who thought, you know, oh, you hate things that but mess with Lovecraft's writing. Let's let's make you sit through this five times. Genius. Ha ha, honey. I did it. <laughs> I'm gonna get out of here. I'm gonna go uh, do something of value. Thank you very much for coming by the Monkey Shine Lab yet again for one of our What is Wrong With You reviews. Uh, thank you very much for coming out here to the Monkey Shine Lab. But if you like what you see, please like, share, subscribe. Be kind to everybody uh, that you run into because you never know who they're going to be tomorrow. Except for my ass, you know where I'll be. Thanks very much for coming out. Appreciate it. Appreciate you, man. Let's get back to talking about toys. All these dirty movies. I did want to say that um, Michelle's artwork, as well as all of the other stuff that went into photography uh, and uh, lighting and, you know, other choices that were in this, you can see where they, um, uh, at one point, it's a convertible bug, but if you're not thinking about it, you're looking at just a convertible car and the way that they sort of framed what they had, you know, uh, they, they did a lot with what they, with what they had. And that's the kind of innovation that I always appreciate. And I always want to give a huge promotion to, because, um, I think that's the true magic of cinema. Um, not that anybody can make a movie with Marvel money because you got to put up with people who make Marvel decisions. <laughs> but um, anyway, I did want to give this film clear and present props for everything that was in the movie. And any sort of commentary that I have is only meant to be positive and not, you know, played for too hard a laugh at your expense.